The media and fashion industry has always been associated with images of beauty and style. From the movie stars of yesterday to the supermodels of today, the media has captured the interest of the public by presenting new creations from the world's most influential designers. At one time, it was the hourglass figure that was the standard for fashion and physical allure. Today, the world of fashion has taken on a new look. Top designers are now creating an image using extravagantly tall, svelte, petite models. They parade these models down runways in front of the buyers who represent the most prestigious and sought-after merchandisers in the world. In order to advertise this look, the industry saturates the market with advertisements in magazines, on television, and in catalogs that are seen by impressionable, fashion-conscious men and women all over the world. Just from what we see in television, what we see in film, what we see um, on runways, what we see featured in magazines, we see these very, very thin, thin women. Yesterday, for instance, I was watching, looking through magazines, and there were timelines that showed actresses like Lindsay Lohan, um, entertainers like Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton, and others that had gone from what appeared to be a very normal and healthy body type um, within two years losing as much as 50 pounds and and girls that are well into their 20s weighing less than 100 pounds 85 pounds it is frightening in fact some of these girls i have seen in person it is really shocking to see that they feel and believe that somehow they have to look that way in order to meet the perception of beauty or what we consider ideal beauty. Such images depicting rail-thin models adorned in the world's most popular fashions have created a style which is both unattainable as well as unhealthy. In order to achieve the look that the world of fashion is promoting, a growing number of teens, especially females, have gone to extraordinary measures to lose weight. These measures have included adopting behavior associated with anorexia nervosa and bulimia. The notion that you must be thin in order to be fashionable is not limited to impressionable teens. Throughout the entertainment industry, there is an ever-increasing push to be the right size. As a result, many actors have yielded to the pressure to be thin in order to compete for jobs in a very competitive market. The pressure I experienced very early on when I was establishing my career was as a model. And that was very difficult because I didn't have uh, traditional uh, facial or body features. And I tried to fit into a mold at one time that simply didn't work. I did experiment with um, the dieting process or starving myself process or even using uh, laxatives. Uh, to make myself more lean. I remember uh, early days that someone had, refer had recommended that I even try uh, some sort of drug like cocaine to really lose the weight. And I thought if I have to do that uh, in order to lose weight and be a model, forget about it. While the phenomenon of seeking to be thin dominates the world of fashion today, the look was introduced to the world of fashion back in the mid-1960s. Twiggy Lawson, one of the world's first British supermodels, reached international fame and was named The Face in 1966. Standing only 5'6 and weighing 91 pounds, Twiggy took the fashion world by storm. Her slender look caused a great uproar influencing millions of girls to emulate the Twiggy look. What people fail to realize is that much of what is seen in fashion advertising is an illusion. Not even the models themselves are as flawless as they seem to be. These images of perfection are the result of spending more than two hours with professional hair and makeup stylists. The photographer then enhances the look by creating subtle lighting effects 
and camera angles that feature the best possible look the talent has to offer. And if that isn't enough to manufacture aesthetically pleasing images, before publication, the photographs are retouched and airbrushed to eliminate any hint of imperfection. It is no wonder that women today pale in comparison to the images they see throughout the media world. Today, anorexia is ranked the third highest illness in the world. According to recent statistics provided by Natural Health Magazine, there are at least 8 million victims of anorexia in the United States alone. Diagnosis of anorexia and bulimia has increased 32 percent every five years since 1950. Studies have shown that approximately 44 percent of women who are either average in weight or underweight believe they are overweight. Joyce Stoller, a film critic, says when high-profile men like Gandhi and Bobby Sands starve themselves, it is considered a political event. But when millions of women do it, they're considered fashion casualties and die unnamed and unknown. One such fatality was the popular 1970s singer Karen Carpenter. Carpenter brought the disorder to the public eye when she died at the age of 32 from heart failure as a result of a prolonged battle with the eating disorder. At the time of her death, anorexia was not common and very few people knew of its existence. Although it is well known that several fashion icons suffer from an eating disorder, many still do not comprehend the severity of this illness. On November 17, 2006, a 21-year-old model from Brazil died from a generalized infection caused by anorexia. Anna Carolina Rustin stood 5'8 and weighed 88 pounds at the time of her death. However, how much blame can be attributed to the media for the increased incidence of anorexia or bulimia? According to Linda Gellin, a student of psychology, anorexia nervosa has been a well-known disease since 1684, but it was not until 1870 that it was identified and diagnosed by a group of physicians in England. History shows that you need not be a heathen to suffer from the ravages of an eating disorder. Catherine of Siena is an example of a highly spiritual person who struggled with bulimia and anorexia. She restricted herself to the consumption of herbs and would stick twigs down her throat to induce regurgitation. Some scholars suggest that this act of denial was a form of deprivation intended to enhance her spirituality. Researchers agree that there is not one single cause for eating disorders, but the most common reason known is the social pressures to be thin. The older time, they were more forgiving and more accepting of, of uh, uh, fuller. Uh, figures um, today, yeah, you can say that it increased. I mean, uh, the Calvin Klein look, uh, uh, the childish, uh, more anorexic uh, look is being pushed and bombarded really very heavily. Amidst the harm and the craze to be thin, there is a slight string of hope. In September of 2006, Spain announced its ban on overly thin models at a high end fashion show. Madrid turned away hundreds of underweight models for reasons that too many young girls are developing eating disorders in efforts to copy the rail-thin looks of the models. The regional official of Spain, Concha Guerra, said the fashion industry has the responsibility to portray healthy body images. Fashion bosses from Paris, Milan, New York and London have now entered the debate. Organizers of London Fashion Week decided not to completely ban ultra-thin models, but instead have asked designers to use healthy people. On the other hand, the head of the French body said he was against adding any new regulations simply because of similar moves by Madrid and Milan. Madrid's initiative seems to be the first step towards a healthier mindset. Hopefully, society will realize that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes, and the media will begin to reflect this new look as well. I started on the left, then I had to take him to the right He was out of breath, but he kept on dancing all night